the sort of work we're doing is to try and understand how the early nervous system is patterned to see how different brain areas are set aside and specified to develop different kinds of cells and to eventually make bits of the brain which are quite different in their organisation and function. And we spend a lot of years working on hindbrain and now we're sort of more interested in forebrain regionalisation. Um, and we discovered a what we think is an important local organiser in the middle of the forebrain, which um, patterns large areas of the thalamus. That's my own lab, but the centre as a whole, um, there were sort of 20 odd investigators and about 120 people altogether. And um, nearly all of them are, are focused on some aspect of early development, from neural induction through to pattern formation, axon guidance and connectivity. And um, we just recently hired um, some people looking at later stages of development, at the emergence of function. So um, a physiologist who works on retinogicolate pathfinding and um, a cell level physiologist who's a patch clamper looking at synaptogenesis. So we're trying to get more neural and less early developmental. There's more and more interest in trying to solve the problem of brain complexity, understanding it, by working through development. It's you know, fairly obvious that's one way to approach it. Um, you know, to figure out what is the um, genetic program for constructing a brain. What are the instructions you know, locked up inside the egg nucleus um, that flower out into this amazingly complex structure? One way to approach that is to look at how it develops. And um, given that interest, and our group is by no means the only one around um, of this size, um, it seemed natural to have a journal to serve that field. And what we've arranged in this journal, I think, is, um, is a killer combination with open access being very popular and, in fact, virtually compulsory now in England, given the, the, fund, the funding uh, requirements. Um, clickable movies, um, what else have we got? Front pages, all kinds of good stuff. And most of all, we've got a, a killer editorial advisory board of really, really top-rate scientists. And I think that will probably go some way to um, ensuring that we get a fair flow of high-quality papers. Yes, yeah, so the editorial board was chosen um, by each of the four editors putting forward names, their, their sort of favourite names, um, in their own areas. And then we all voted on who should be included. And we hope to have achieved a, a, a sort of cross-composition of senior and junior uh, faculty members and, of course, international, and, of course, both male and female. And we hope we've got the right sort of mix um, to satisfy everybody. And it includes um, many of, the, of the, the big names, as it were, in the field, all the way from neural induction through to complete brains. In brief, the scope of the journal is to, is to cover the whole field of development, uh, not just the early phases with which uh, I'm acquainted and which Bill is largely acquainted, but also later stages when activity becomes important. And um, our other two editors, uh, Rachel Wong and Josh Sainz, um, are well-known experts in those areas. So we hope between the four of us to cover neural development's um, full spectrum, um, right up to the stage of a you know, fully live twitching embryo. Um, Bill also has um, experience in invertebrate development early on, so I think we cover it pretty well. And we felt that you know, more editors may mean less consistency across, across the field in terms of reviewing standards and so on. So uh, my view about neural development is it should be run by scientists, and not by um, a professional working, practicing scientists, um, rather than professional editors. And I'd like to model it on the success, I'd like, would like to achieve the same success that Neuron had early on, when it was first started, it was edited by four scientists from UCSF. And it was an extremely good journal. I'm not saying it isn't now, but that was the way to take it off, was by having uh, practicing scientists um, looking after what goes into it and making sure that it's of appropriate high enough quality. That's one way in which we can ensure that neural development becomes a high caliber journal. So what are the benefits of publishing in, in our journal? Um, will be essentially that you're publishing in a journal which speaks to your speciality, so all your colleagues and competitors 
will see your work and see it very quickly, immediately. Um, so there's very little lag time between acceptance and it being up for everyone in the world to see. Um, it'll also have some features which will make it very attractive. Um, namely, every paper will have its own cover page, a cover picture, your own, the, with the author's choice of, of uh, illustration. And um, you'll have movies embedded in the, in, the, in the paper which are instantly clickable, so you can watch development in action. Um, that and the, and the normal things you get with online publication, such as cross-referencing and so on, um, should make it very attractive. Okay, so the journal has um, two important attributes apart from its scientific potential, and that is its online and open access. Being online allows easy cross-referencing, um, essentially in, in the case of our publisher, almost unlimited length of articles, which many contributors will love. So no supplementary material, it's all included in the paper. Um, and for being open access, um, it's clear that you get very rapid access to the, to the paper. Straight off PubMed, there it is, you can read it. There's no hanging around, no going to the library, no asking for subscriptions. And it's clear that around the world, um, libraries are giving up on expensive journals. Mainly because of the price, but also because uh, they're not open access. And at best, they give you access after six months or whatever. So that, coupled with the constraints put on scientists by their funders, for example, the MRC and the Wellcome Trust in Britain, are now both insisting on our papers being open access.